Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jason. This is my YouTube channel, Camping with the Cross. Let's take the plunge. This is my dog Scarlett, and we are traveling the country in our 2021 F-250 and 2021 North Star Truck Camper. We seek out some of God's most beautiful creations, and we share the gospel along the way, evangelizing and plant seeds. Last year, I even got to do a baptism in the Pistol River of Oregon, so I decided to document this year's adventure with his YouTube channel. So come and join us for the ride. All right, so I just left my buddy's house and I need to get gas. Um, making my way to the Keys. And one travel tip that I found was the Circle K. Uh, the Circle K app, the first five Phillips give you 25 cents off per gallon. You don't need to sign up for anything other than give them your number. And then mobile number, you can see 354 right there. So, so and you save three cents off per gallon after the first five pillows. Just thought, uh, you know, little travel tip for you. All right, so this is so cool. I just set my camera down there to try and get some more footage. I had no idea what I should film, what I shouldn't. So just gonna do a little gas pumping footage for you. But then uh, I opened the door uh, to bed Scarlet and the guy who's pumping gas just had a frame see Scarlett and I start talking to him and we start and then I noticed that he has uh, cross earrings on so I ask him about those and uh, start talking to him about his feet and it's just awesome I wish there was less background noise so that you could hear the whole conversation What's up? yeah I got, I got lucky with her <laughs> I'm just happy to be along the ride. What kind you got? Okay. Hey, I like your I like your earrings. Are you uh are you Christian? I So I was just filming that little gas bit and turned around and this guy's wearing uh earrings with crosses in them so i asked him about them and he said you know he believes in god but he doesn't really he's not chasing after him or nothing his name was martin and i just uh i asked him if he had a bible and was going to give him one if he didn't but he said he had one so i uh i just encouraged him to start at matthew 5 and just to read a little bit and really digest what it says and also um referred him to the book of james because that was my favorite book when i was a new believer so i don't know i just feel the holy spirit right now and um i'm gonna be praying for martin and so if uh y'all would say a little prayer for god to draw martin near to him as well um i'd appreciate that all right it's tuesday i just drove from Spring Hill at my buddy Rick's house down here south of Fort Myers. Outside of us, Planet Fitness. We go there and work out in the morning. Um, I have another camper here in the parking lot and a van right there. So it's safe for overnight parking. Uh, it's a well lit spot here. And um, yeah, I'm gonna curl back there for a couple hours with. Uh, Missy here. You gotta go potty. Huh? You gotta go potty. Alright, so heading into Planet Fitness to do my workout, get my shower, and start my day. All right, so I just had a nice workout. Um, seven o'clock now. 
Uh, I found a dog park that's 13 minutes away, so I'm gonna make up my protein shake and drive there with Scarlett and let her get some exercise while I get started on my day. And one more thing I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna fire up my internet and my computer so that they are ready to go when we get to the dog park. So this is T-Mobile Home Internet. Um, it's been working great for me. I haven't used Starlink at all this year in 2024 yet. Um, so I've always had signal with this. And it's only $50 a month. So, yeah. Uh, highly encourage you add that to your quiver of internet providers if you're going to do van life. Oh yes, we're gonna have some fun. She takes a little time to warm up. So I'm waiting on my government phone to do some updates so that I can get on the hotspot. So I went ahead and started reading Psalm 103 and bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases? redeems your life from the pit which he did it crowns you with steadfast love and mercy which he's done who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles and i just really feel like you know i'm 30 gonna be 38 this year but i still feel like i'm in my 20s um and that's just, I mean, I'm blessed to feel that way. And, um, yeah, I have so much peace. And I wouldn't really want it too much different from this. southern Florida bush country now. Um, been a lot of this. Pretty scenic. Kind of cloudy day. Not super hot. Uh, I got four more hours of work to do once I get to Homestead. And I got another hour to go. Good morning. So, I was supposed to wake up in 20 minutes, but there's a storm coming in. So, just did some looking, and we are going to get buttoned up and get on the road before the storm comes and start our drive through the Keys. Nice breeze with the window open. Last night, I slept well. Did you sleep well, Miss Scarlet? Did you sleep well, Pumpkin? Yeah? Oh my.
about 15 till 9 right now. And I'm gonna pull into this uh, state park and work from there today. I have a Florida State Park Pass. One of the uh, benefits of being a disabled veteran. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna flash this and have a free parking spot for the day and then we'll go down to the campground on the Navy base um, later today. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am blessed and unstoppable. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Have a great day. You do the same. So it is Good Friday here in Key West, and let's get into the Word. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for what you did for us today, so that by your blood all our sins are washed away, and that we can be in fellowship with you. Lord Jesus, we ask that you bring new meaning to your Word today, and uh, help us to come closer to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And what I want to talk about is drinking because I'm in Key West and that's one thing that Key West is known for. And also, last week, my Facebook feed uh, gave me one of those memories from 13 years ago. And so this was me 13 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I've come a long way. So I am prior Navy and I lived out the whole drunken sailor stereotype to a T. I used to own a winery and, and I owned that winery because we drank so much that I wanted a way to cut costs so that we weren't spending all of our money on alcohol. Opening up a winery is not the way to do that, but um, yeah. And also, I've had two of my family members uh, die from the effects of alcohol, one recently. And so I feel like this is a topic that needs to be addressed. 
and I just want to share with you what the Bible says on it. If you read John 2, that's the famous story of Jesus turning water into wine. But if you go and actually read the scripture, he didn't do it so everyone could get lit. He did it so that the bridegroom's family could um, be spared the embarrassment of not buying enough wine for the wedding. The moral of the water and the wine story is to be kind. It's not to go and bring five extra fists to the party so that everyone can be blacked out and making terrible decisions. I have to say this just because of the people in my past, but my former in-laws uh, would always use the verse from 1 Timothy 5.23, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. If you had a sour stomach in the morning from drinking too much the night before, they encourage you to drink some wine because it's in the Bible. The context of this, if you look into it, Paul is actually writing to Timothy to mix a little wine in his water because back in the day, wine or water would have all these microbes growing in it that they didn't know about back then. So you would get sick if you just drank straight water. But if you mixed a little wine into it, that would act as a preservative for the water and it wouldn't be strong enough to be getting drunk. All right, so basically you can't just take those two scriptures though and run with it and say that alcohol is good. You have to look at the whole world of your God and see what it says about drunkenness because there's several scriptures about drunkenness and I'm just going to touch on a few. First off, it's mentioned in Galatians 5.22 as one of the works of the flesh. Uh, the works of the flesh are opposite to the fruits of the Spirit and one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. And so that's basically what I take the whole meaning of this with alcohol is are you in control because if you're not in control you're gonna you're gonna be acting a fool you're not gonna be being the light and you're gonna be more likely to sin it's peter 5 8 it says be sober-minded be watchful your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour you're making yourself out to be an easy target by stumbling around that lion is going to notice it and he's going to come after you when i first became a christian i had a lot of pain and anger and uh, after a couple weeks of pursuing god there was a sermon at my home church that completely broke all those chains off of me and i finally had peace again and so i went to the beach after that and the beach was so peaceful. It was exactly my state of mind. So I'm just talking to God because I know he's got me, you know, and I said, look, you took all this away. I will live for you the rest of my life. Do I have to stop drinking? Because at the time I was in a Bible study, the I was the only person that still touched alcohol in that Bible study. So I didn't know if I needed to give it up in order to walk this out correctly with him. I asked him, and he sent a little airplane bottle of Fireball that was full right to my feet in this super calm sea. No joke. So I took that as I can continue to drink. I just have to be careful. Use that self-control. And First Peter 1, 13 and 14 is very relevant to that. Uh, therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not conform to the passions of your former ignorance. So though I continue to drink, I maintain that self-control, and it looks nothing like it did before I became a Christ follower. we got a few minutes till sunset. The sun is going down. Uh, we got clouds coming in, but I'm thinking that it might be a perfect storm for an awesome sunset. So we're going to try to get to the water and uh, get some good shots. So I will share what I get here.
All right. Y'all be blessed, and I'll see you next time.